uh, got some exciting news. I was talking with Jacob. He said, wanted to thank you for everybody for the prayers for Tricia during her hospital uh, stay. He said that uh, had been for the prayers and the good Lord wouldn't have been where we are today. Uh, he says she's responsive, she's up, she's talking, she's texting, you know, and doing a uh, thing on Facebook. So she should answer her texts and everything. And the doctor said, as well as she does well, probably a week she'll be coming home. Isn't that wonderful? That is great. Okay. Uh, I want to thank everybody for stepping up last week for the uh, work in the office while Patricia's out. Uh, everybody filled in. We've got a couple of openings for this week. If you uh, feel need, please call me. So you can fill out uh, all day Wednesday and Monday morning. The rest of it is taken care of. Been very fortunate. We got a nice prayer blanket today for Patricia here that was made by Nancy Holland and Wendy. Um, be given to her. Uh, they always do that. Somebody's sick or in the hospital. Sorry, I got a frog. I'm horse today. I got a nice prayer blanket for her. It'll be given to her when she gets home. Um, there's a lot of things going on at church as always. And I'm sure you're familiar with all of them. I'd like to welcome everybody here today. People are not here today. Uh, we pray for those. If you have any visitors, please fill out the visitor's card. <clears throat> Our precious Christmas child is still up and going. Going through July for uh, composition books. In August, there's crayons. So the sales are out there, so stock up and bring that in for the Operation Christmas Child. Um, the deacon list will be going out Monday or Tuesday for eligible deacons to be voted on for next year. Uh, we'll compile that list Monday. So if you have a feel a need to serve, please call the office or let me know. So we'll be on the list. Uh, the phone tree. If you've taken a hand line out, just using a cell phone or just have a cell phone, uh, please call the church office so we can update our um, phone tree list as far as communications. Um, the Christmas child will meet this week, 31st on Monday, and Sarah Walmart's class at 10. Our Baptist men's meeting at 8.30 at the Picnic Shelter. And the women that live in faith meet at 9.30 on Wednesday. And we got our regular Wednesday night activities. <clears throat> I got something that sort of corresponds with our communion today. It said, a man once said he wanted to be so full of Christ, which I think we all want to be full of Christ, don't we? But he said, when that mosquito bites me and he leaves, I want that mosquito singing. There's power in that blood, you know. You know. So I think we all want to be full of Christ. So if we get bit, that mosquito's leaving, he's got the power of God in him, you know. But it's just like the old Baptist hymn classic says, there's power in the wonderful working power of the precious blood of Jesus of the Lamb. That's worth an amen, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And later today, we're going to partake in the Lord's Supper with the cup that represents that blood that he shed for us. And it tells us in 1 Peter, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sin and spotless lamb of God that saved us all. Thank you. Good morning. I'm gonna pray for the uh, pastor search team in just a second. But first, I personally just want to thank each and every one of them that's serving on this committee. Their, 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 uh, just their dedication and their love for this church, and you know it, this is a job, and it, it's time-consuming, it's very hard, and they're doing a wonderful job. And let's just give them an applause. And just thank you. Let us pray. We pray for God's guidance in how the future pastor will be presented to this church. We pray for this pastor search committee. Please, God, be with Jeffrey, Wendy, Sandra, Neil, Daryl, Paul, and Donnie. 
as they go through this ordeal as these applicants and just keep them strong and keep them faithful, which I know they will be. And we pray this in your loving name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Good morning. How are y'all today? It's a beautiful day. It's a good day. Um, well, some of you uh, have been wondering about this horn up here. Uh, I'll go ahead and answer uh, two questions before we pray. No, I did not kill it, okay? I bought it in Israel. It's a ram's horn. Called a shofar. We're going to talk about it a little bit today. Second thing, y'all know Patricia's in the room, right? There's a concern by somebody. You know what she did yesterday? She asked for a Dr. Pepper. And somebody said, she ain't right. She asked for a Dr. Pepper. Anyway, but we're grateful, aren't we? I mean, that's amazing. I've never heard of anybody having surgery, even that. Well, I have heard of a few people asking for pizza and things like that because I don't know anybody that goes to a hospital for fine dining, right? No reservations there for fine dining. But we're grateful that she's doing well and um, grateful for what, what God's up to um, in that. Okay, let's pray. Well, Father, uh, we thank you so much for your goodness to us, your kindness. And, Lord, we do pray um, you'll continue to, get, to bless Patricia with good health uh, for Tim Goodwin, you continue to give him strength as he recovers. And, Lord, we just uh, pray even now for our hearts and lives, this very moment, this very hour, that you speak to us. And, Lord, we, as we always do, pray for that one thing. We at least need one thing. We ask you for it. And, Lord, I pray that you would help us uh, be clear in our hearts and minds in what you're saying and hearing you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're talking about the Feast of Trumpets today, and um, the, if, you, if you like titles, it's Attention, Please, Be Ready, because that's what trumpets do. Now, this is a trumpet uh, of the Old Testament. Uh, some people don't know the reason for the ram's horn. When Abraham and Isaac went up Mount Moriah, remember that? And he was going to sacrifice Isaac. Uh, the Jews call it the binding of Isaac, and he's almost ready, and got the angel of the Lord, Christ in the Old Testament, says, whoa, stop. And then a ram is caught in a thicket. So this is a ram's horn, and very, very honored uh, in the Old Testament. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Now I'm going to attempt to play it, okay, and just show you, because it, it relates to the message, all right? How's that? Good enough? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, CDs of my, no, I'm just kidding. Um, we're not going to talk about it. But that is, that's uh, the, the whole thing, and it really relates to the message title. Attention. Why? Because a ram's horn gets your attention. I mean, if you heard that, wouldn't that get your attention? Yeah. Today, um, and my, my grandson asked about this. He said, because I told him I was, I was doing this, um, I, he said, uh, does that where we get the word for horn on a car? I said, exactly. Why is a horn on a car? I mean, you know, you have a cow horn or a bull horn, whatever. But a horn is to get people's attention. Now, for some of you, it's to be angry. I, mean, I get it, okay? But, and some of you do get people's attention. Uh, I always get people's attention whenever I honk the horn. When I'm honked at, it gets my attention. The point of the ram's horn is to get attention, just like when you're driving the car and you hear an ambulance, a police car, a fire truck, it gets your attention, right? You look in the rearview mirror, oh, i got to pull over. And you pull over, you do something. Why? You, it got your attention, and then you pull over. If it's a fire truck and they're doing this, they're also honking that horn. Y'all know what? Y'all ever heard a train horn? Yeah. Why do they do a, they do the ding, 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 right? You're supposed to stop. But the train horn also is really, really loud. And uh, I actually knew somebody back, oh, 
several years ago, they put one of those train horns in their car. <laughs> That'd get people's attention on the road, now wouldn't it? Put that horn to, to work. But the whole point is attention. Now, um, we're going to look at, uh, real briefly, uh, Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23 is the chapter that talks about the seven different feasts. And there's just a couple of verses here about the Feast of Trumpets, one of the simplest um, uh, feasts there are, uh, the fifth feast. It says in verse 23, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work, And you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. That's it. Pretty simple, right? He's basically saying, okay, I want you to rest, blow trumpets uh, as a reminder to rest, and make offerings. Done. It's kind of the way it is. But there's a meaning behind all of this, and that's what we want to see. It was a special day of rest. It's one of the seven special Sabbaths. Maybe it's not on Saturday, but it's a special Sabbath. Special, the word uh, Sabbath or Shabbat means to cease. That's basically what the means, meaning is. It means to rest, to stop whatever you're doing. And he even says, no laborious work. Don't go to work that day. Everybody's off that day. Why? Because he wants them to pay attention to him. Now, uh, let's just kind of give you a really, really, really quick uh, little uh What's going on here? Context. Uh, it says it's in the seventh month on the first day of the month. Uh, if you're wanting to know, this year is September 15th. It's in the fall. The seventh month is Tishri. Now, it's the seventh month of the religious calendar because Nisan in the spring is the first month when they have Passover. Now, this is the seventh month. But in the civil calendar... The legal calendar, it's the first month. Guess what we call it today? Rosh Hashanah. Y'all have heard of that, right? Yeah. It means head of the year, meaning that's their New Year's Day in the uh, Old Testament for uh, the civil stuff. And today, Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year. Now, what's the big deal about that? Well, it's interesting. The first day, Rosh Hashanah, Tishri 1, is a reminder of rest. We're going to talk about that. But it's also in preparation, 10 days later, is the Day of Atonement. We call it Yom Kippur. Yom is the Hebrew word for day. Kippur is the word for covering, the day of covering, covering our sin. So Yom Kippur, the Tishri the 10th. And then the 15th day is the Feast of Tabernacles starts, the 15th through the 22nd, eight days Uh, the, the final feast, the seventh feast in the seventh month. And so you get this idea here. Now, what's also interesting here, the uh, uh, Feast of Trumpets is also exactly coinciding with a new moon. What's a new moon? We barely see the moon. And they actually have it for two days. Why? Well, you might not see it the first night. So just to make sure. They, they make sure by looking at the, the, the next day, too. And if you, if you were Jewish, uh, of the Jewish persuasion today in the synagogue, guess what? Rosh Hashanah is actually two days. The 15th starts on Friday night, the 16th, and the 17th ends at sunset. Why? Because just in case. So that's what they would do. Uh, it's, it's a day of rest. It's a day for pausing. It doesn't mean just take a nap. It means pause, think, think about God, think about what he's up to, think about what he said in his word. Remember, and, and if, we're gonna, if you were to look at this whole message, the whole point is remember and be ready. Remember what and be ready for what? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, this is called the Feast of Trumpets. Um, and so we're going to talk about that, and there's three basic things we're going to talk about, all right? Number one, the signal. Now, I just played you the signal. You heard it, you know. That's the signal. 
It, it's a, an attention getter. It calls for action of some sort. Um, all that kind of stuff. Now, let me put the context here between the Feast of Pentecost, that's around May, and the Feast of Trumpets in September, mid September, is the farming time. You're taking care of crops, you're getting ready for everything for the fall harvest. They're kind of doing that around here, aren't they? Yeah, that's what we're doing. It's summertime, crops are growing, rain's coming, sunshine, all those kind of things. They did the very same thing, preparing for the fall harvest. Now, in the church, we're in the Pentecost season after that harvest initially, waiting on the, the fuller harvest uh, to come. Um, and so that's kind of what's going on here. Now, one of the things that this thing called for uh, for the Day of Atonement was kind of a, okay, I want you to be serious about this whole matter, about your sin and about yourself and about all this that's going on here. And that's what they would call for. So uh, let's look at, at this, what this means and kind of give an idea of the signal. Because um, this is for any day and for festival days and for special days, all right? So in Numbers chapter 10, we're not going to go there, but if you want to go there later, Numbers 10 verses 1 through 10, he says this, take a solid block of silver and make two trumpets. So we have silver trumpets and shofar trumpets. Silver trumpets were for special things. And he even says, okay, here's what I want you to do with that uh, silver trumpet. It was a signal. It's for calling assemblies. Um, if both silver trumpets sounded, everybody was to gather. If one sounded, that was for leaders to gather. Pretty simple, right? Kind of like the old-fashioned text message or phone call or whatever back then. Here's, the, here's what, they're, what they're doing. Assemblies. Journeys. Now, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness and all that kind of stuff, the silver trumpets would blast and they would know, time to leave. And they would go out. And there was a certain order or a certain way that they would blast. Okay, so this group goes first, this group goes second, this group goes third. And so it was for assemblies, it was for journeys, it was for battles. What do you mean for battles? Well, one example, uh, I'm, I'm, we're not going to go there, but in Second Chronicles 13, Abijah has got all of his troops and they're... Uh, He's the king of Judah in the south. And the wicked king of Israel in the north has come to attack. The army's double. He says, yeah, you, you, what are you doing? You shouldn't do this. And they did an ambush thing. And when they did, immediately the trumpet sounded. And you can read it. The trumpet sounded. Boom! And they went into action. And they actually won the battle because God was uh, fighting for them against the others. So you've got assemblies and journeys and battles. But then he also says, I want you to blow this trumpet at the first of every feast. That way you know the feast is cranking up. At the first of every new moon, that's for the month. So you got the feast, seven feasts. you got the new moon every month. Sabbath, every week. I want you to blow this. And for sacrifices. I want you to do that. And then one other thing was in the time of your gladness. What does that mean? A special victory, something that would blow it. In other words, what you see here, and this is where it comes down to where we are. You blow the trumpet at the beginning of the, of, of the week, the Sabbath. You blow the trumpet at the beginning of the month, the new moon. You blow the trumpet at the beginning of the year, uh, of the year. In other words, you give God everything from the start. The week, the month, the year. So that's Old Testament. Well, guess what? It's also 2023. Why? Because God wants him, himself, to be Lord, and he wants us to acknowledge his lordship and say, Lord, Today is yours. This week is yours. This month is yours. This year is yours. I want to do what you want to do. You see, this is not just some kind of religious thing 
that they did back then. It, everything had meaning. Um, even the shofar, you've heard this. Uh, Y'all remember the song, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho? Go blow them ram horns, Joshua cried. Well, that's what they did. They blew a ram horn. Uh, and God, now this is so strange. The captain of the host of the Lord, Christ in the Old Testament. Did Joshua know that's who it was? Well, Joshua wasn't sure who he was, but he knew he was somebody. You know why? Because he said, <clears throat> Are you for us or our enemies? Why did he say that? I don't know what he looked like, but I just think just being in his presence, it's like, okay, whoever he's leading is going to win. Right? Have y'all son, y'all done that before, right? Gone to play a football game and you go, look at that front line. Oh, my goodness. We are toast. Or basketball, you know. All of our players are 5'10". All of theirs are 6'6". Six, six. I wonder who's going to win. And that's kind of the way Joshua was. And you know what the, the angel of the Lord said? The captain of the host of the Lord said? Okay, here's, here's the deal. I want you to march around Jericho six days, one time a day. Blow trumpets, but don't say anything. Seventh day, seven times. Blow trumpets, then shout. Walls will fall down, you go ahead and conquer. Excuse me. I mean, I know we're near Fort Bragg. They don't give that kind of advice for battle strategies. They just don't do that. No army would do that, but God did. Why? Was he not logical? He was very logical. But sometimes God's logic is just way beyond ours. Just way beyond. Now, he never said that again. They never did that again. That one time, Jericho, they blew the ram horns. Ehud, in the book of the Judges, uh, when he assassinated their oppressive ruler, Eglon the Hittite, it says he blew a shofar, calling for trumpets to come battle against this oppressor. And so you see that over and over and over again, that the shofar was blown for certain battles. Uh, when Solomon became king, Zadok blew a shofar. For the ascendancy of Solomon as king, that's just what they did uh, to let people know that. So that's the signal. Silver trumpets, shofar trumpets. Second thing, significance. What did it really mean to the people in Israel? What does it really mean to us? Well, there's basically uh, a couple of things, big things. One is assembly. In other words, oh, got to get together. That's what they would do. They would get together. And of course, we read it here. It was a day of rest. And he said you're to have a holy convocation is the translation. It means get together for worship. There's an assembly involved. No laborious work. Why did he say that? Because he didn't want anybody going to work and messing with their to-do lists. This is a day for you to focus on the Lord. Assemble to him. Worship him. You're accountable to him. And that's the two things, the significance of a, of a trumpet. It's assembly and accountability. Those two things over and over and over. You see this over and over and over in, in Scripture. Uh, they got, once they got their attention, oh, okay. And it wasn't just to get attention like, oh, that was nice. Uh, good. Oh, that sounded good. No. It was, a, it was attention getting to do something. And in this case, to assemble and, and, and do what he wanted them to do, to gather together and worship the Lord. So, now, signal, significance. So what's the scene today? What, what does this matter to me? I mean, does this really relate to me at all? Yes, it does. Um, there's two things, remembering and ready. What do you mean? Well, he said, I want you to be reminded. I want you to rest. Remember something, right? And he wanted them to be ready. Ready for what? Well, ready for an assembly, or ready for a battle, ready for whatever it was that was going on. Well, you see the same, very same thing here, because Jesus spoke about his work at the end of the age. What do you mean? Well, his trumpet is going to sound. It's going to call us to attention, and he's going to do some action, and there's going to be an assembly, 
and there's going to be an accountability. Have you ever read 1 Thessalonians 4 where it says the trumpet of God? Yeah. The trumpet will sound. And, and in that particular chapter, chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians, it's talking about a shofar. Why do I know that? Well, well, something is interesting. You see, um, in Jewish custom, in Jewish civilization, whatever, when a young man wanted to marry a young lady, here's how they would do it. He and the father would go from their village to her village. And there at her village, uh, the father would pour a cup and give it to the son. And the son would give it to the bride. She would drink from it, and he would drink from it. Now, as soon as they drank from that cup, they're betrothed. Does that sound like the Lord's Supper kind of? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Because Jesus gave them the cup. Now, they were in the middle of the Passover supper, but this was the third cup. Uh, by the way, it's called the cup of redemption in the Passover, which is interesting. And what did Jesus say? He said, this is the cup of redemption. This is the cup of my blood for forgiveness of sin. New covenant. Y'all remember that? No, am I? Right? That's what he said. Why? He wanted them to know what was going on. He wanted them to remember this, and he wanted them to be ready for this. And so... Uh, there's something going on here, all right? I want you to think about this. Uh, when Paul, he's the first one that actually wrote about the Lord's Supper, and he wrote about it, and we're going to participate in it in a, in a few moments. But he said something. He says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So Paul connected the Lord's Supper with the return of Christ. Well, what, would the, what, what does this mean? Well, you've got to understand something. After a young man proposed to a young girl, and they're betrothed, he says, okay, I'm leaving. I'm going to go back to my father's house and build us a place. That's what they did. Uh, Jesus did say that in John 14, didn't he? After the Lord's Supper. I'm going to build us a place, and if I'm, I'm not, don't don't be fussing about it, don't get worried about it, don't be troubled about it, because I'm going to come back, and that's what a bridegroom would always do. They'd come back when, uh, about a year later. There never was an exact date, so the bridegroom was ready. He would be getting ready, and he would always want to hurry it up. But the father was the one who said, "Okay, now we're ready." Why? Because the bridegroom would go any old time. But the father would say, no, 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 it's not ready yet. Not ready, not ready. It's, okay, it's ready. And the bridegroom would get his best man, and they would go in, usually in a torch-lit procession at night. And you know how they would know, the bride would know that he's there? Somebody would blow a shofar and shout the bride's name. Now, if you hadn't made the connection, that's what happens in 1 Thessalonians 4. Uh, the trumpet is blown. I believe it's the trumpet of God. You know, there was the trumpet of God at Mount Sinai that called them to assemble. Same thing happens uh, when the Lord calls us home as a group. The trumpet is blown. A voice is shouted. And that voice, uh, the, the Greek term means a, a cry of military command, like, attention! Y'all know about attention, right? I mean, you've heard that. I mean, that's the one word I know in the military. Attention. Why? Because you have to be at attention. Because guess what? Somebody's fixing to tell you to do something. And that's what the Lord is getting ready to do. He's going to assemble us. Then we're going to go into accountability. We could go into all of that. Judgment seat of Christ, where he gives out rewards, loss of rewards, all those kind of things for believers. But that's what he does. That's how it all connects here. The trumpet of God sounds, and, and, and we go up. And Paul said, now, until that time, this is the Lord's Supper, and you partake of this until he returns, because he hadn't returned yet. And Paul knew that, and that's what he was uh, saying. Well, what's it going to be like? I don't know. Um, I know uh, 
Psalm 17, 5 says, I'll be satisfied with your likeness. I don't know what all that means, but I'm just saying it kind of looks like we're going to be something to look at. And he's going to be something to look at. Because it says uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, face to face. That's a, that's a really, really good idea, face to face. What do you have when somebody's not wanting to talk to you? What do you say sometimes? Look at me, right? Right? And then that what happens? But if, you're, if, you're, if there's no problems, you look straight, you look them right in the eye. No big deal. And that's what the Lord wants us to know. We can look him straight in the face. And not be ashamed when he comes. Why? Well, we're remembering and we're ready. The Lord's going to come back. He's going to come down. He's going to blow the trumpet. The shout of the voice of the archangel. And I believe, just like that bridegroom going to, to get his bride, I think the shout is the name of the person. Why? Well, there'd be lots of brides in our village, right? Well, I hear the trumpet. It's got to be me. Well, maybe it's not you. Maybe it's somebody else. And they would shout the bride's name. Okay, we're ready. We're out of here. And that's what they would do. And God's going to do the same thing with us. Paul talks about this. Uh, he mentions in 1 Corinthians 15 that at the last trumpet in the twinkling of an eye will be changed just like that. And uh, what's the last trumpet? I don't know. I really don't. I've looked at it and searched it and researched it. Uh, I do know that in the Roman army camp, there were three trumpets. One was, we're going to leave. Number two was, get lined up to leave. And number three was, let's leave. That was the last trumpet. So maybe that's it. I don't know. It doesn't say in the scripture. So I'm not going to say that it says that. But the truth of this is attention before the Lord. The actions of Christ himself calling his bride. The assembly before the Lord. And accountability before the, uh, to the Lord. You see, trumpets change things. Just like you're looking in your rearview mirror and you hear a sound of an ambulance or a fire truck and you look and you think, oh, that changes everything. you got to get off the road. you got to slow your trip down. You can't get to wherever you were going as fast as you wanted to. Why? you got to pull over. Because this matters. I mean, it really matters. If it's you in that ambulance, you know it matters. Or if it's your place that the fire truck's going to, it, it matters a big deal. And so you pull over and that, that kind of thing. But trumpets, not, it's not just bad things. Trumpets change things. Um, and it talks about relationships. The, the king and his people, the bridegroom and his bride, the Lord and his worshipers, um, all, all those kind of things coming to assembly and accountability, which happens when the Lord comes back for us. The trumpet of the Lord calls the church to assemble and to be with him in the clouds, to follow him to the place prepared, to worship him in the heavenly temple, to rejoice as his bride, to join in the coronation and reign of the new king, Jesus, um, the Messiah king, to, be, to signal the beginning of a battle that God's going to deal with the earth for wickedness and evil. And then finally, um, when he comes back, It'll signal the new Sabbath, a whole reign of Christ, and a new jubilee. We'll talk about that another time. So what do we do? Well, I mean, it's really clear. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Three things there. What? Knowing something, knowing something, that your labor is not in vain. It's not empty in the Lord. So how do I be part of that? Well, if you're a believer, you're already a part of it. If you're not a believer, remember ABC, all, all have sinned, all need to come, all need to call. B, believe. Believe what? Well, believe Jesus came, lived, died, died for our sin, rose again, and is coming back. Uh, you, you believe in him that he took care of everything. And then see, well, 
all believe call. Come and call. What do you mean call? Well, it's like a friend of mine called RBR. Repent, believe, receive. You call on the Lord. You say, Lord, would, oh, I've sinned. I've turned from that. Would you forgive me? Cleanse me? Come into my life? Invite him in? Guess what? He, he will. He'll come in. Huh? You receive him. And you receive his life forever. That's not something that's just temporary. And that's what he wants us to do. So, the scene today is pretty simple. We remember, as a matter of fact, we're going to say those words in a little bit. Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. It's not just in remembrance, it's also getting ready. Why? Because he's coming back, and we don't want to be ashamed at his coming. We don't want to do anything like that. We want to be ready for his coming. And that, even in the Lord's Supper, says, don't take this stuff lightly. Don't take it in an unworthy manner. What does he mean? He says, you make sure you're right in your heart. And that's what we're going to do today. I trust that's what you've done even this week. We're right in our hearts. We're right with him. We're right with others so that we can remember rightly and be ready Rightly. Amen? And we're going to have a, a moment of invitation here before we go into the Lord's Supper. And um, if anyone has never come to faith in Christ, now's the time. Like, just like that. Sudden, quick, he can do that. So let's go to him in prayer. Father, we come before you now. Lord, we thank you that you uh, call us to yourself, that you have spoken clearly in so many different ways, in so many pictures. And Lord, we would ask that you would speak even in these moments of invitation time, Lord, that you would uh, speak to our hearts. And Lord, we thank you for what you have said already. We ask you to speak the one thing. And Lord, we're asking you to speak to anybody uh, either in this room or who sees this online or whatever to call on you. And we ask you that in Jesus' name.